Hello everyone. Welcome to Kings on the 3rd of January 2021. How exciting is that? 2020 has gone and we've got new hope and new vision for 2021, haven't we? So we'll be uh, sharing today all about um, our new vision moving forward. Uh, we're so glad to have reached this uh, milestone. Um, it's great news, isn't it, that a vaccine has now become available, uh, yet another vaccine. And uh, it's fantastic that we're, uh, that, that we're able to begin to think about having uh, a, a way out of this pandemic, which has caused so many issues for so many people. It's been such a tough time over Christmas and New Year, but we're really glad you're with us today. Thank you for opening your homes to us uh, here at King's Christian Centre in Mould. We hope and pray that as you, this service unfolds, that you get a real blessing from our almighty God in heaven. So um, thanks for being with us. One of the amazing things about the Word of God is that it wants us to enter into a new and living and vital relationship uh, with Jesus. And that relationship, you know, needs to keep on growing, keep on flourishing, keep on being nurtured and nourished. And um, God wants to lead, lead us into new uh, areas of opportunity, new areas of service, new areas of growth and, and, and uh, development personally. Um, and uh, one of the great passages um, that has always uh, enthused me is um, Isaiah 41 and verse 18. I'd just like to share this with you. It'll come up on screen and you'll be able to see it. Um, but um, uh, just hear the word of God and think about how this affects you. I will open up rivers for them on the high plateaus. I will give them fountains of water in the valleys. I will fill the desert with pools of water. Rivers fed by springs will flow across the parched ground. I will plant trees in the barren desert, cedar, acacia, myrtle, olive, cypress, fir, and pine. I am doing this so all who see this miracle will understand what it means, that it is the Lord who has done this, the Holy One of Israel who created it. Can you imagine what that would mean to those people who heard it at the time? Water flowing in the desert, trees growing in the barren areas, new life, new hope, new encouragement, new blessing. God wants to pour out his new blessing on his church. And I hope that you take encouragement from hearing the word of God this morning and maybe applying it into your situation. What is God asking you to step out into? Like Peter stood, stepped out of the boat and walked on the water. And as that great uh, book title says, unless you get out of the boat, you can never walk on water. So um, please think about how this affects you. We'll be looking at this theme throughout our time together this morning. Be thou my vision, O Lord.
How do we celebrate New Year's? By staying up all night long. And we get sparkling cider. Some people stay up till midnight. I fell asleep a lot. And what happens at midnight? The ball in New York City drops. Everybody's happy. We celebrate. It's weird when we have to um, K-I-S-S kiss. <laughs> Gross. What are your New Year's resolutions? I have sweets all the time. A backflip. Change my name to Sparkly. Every week, a movie night, a game night, and a Gilligan's Island night. Have lots of time with my grandparents. I would like to try wasabi. I like to get a unicorn and bunnies. What's the thing you want to do most with your life? Want to be a NFL kicker, be the best cellist in the world, and be the best Lego builder in the world. Going to all the continents. A missionary. And when I ride a deer. Pharmaceutical rep, because that's what my dad does. Have like cool bedroom with like cool posters and a hot tub and a ladder with closets and have like a secret lab. I want to get married to Kian. It would be a pony wedding with lots of ponies and have twin girls, Maddie and Madison. Why is it not good to give up? Then you'll never achieve what you could. Even if you have some rough times, you don't give up. You keep going. Someday you will get it. And don't ever say you can't get it. If you give up, you might be missing out because one day you will get it. And it will be really awesome <laughs> when you do. How can you help someone to not give up? Encouraging them. Giving them advices for stuff. Say, you're doing a good job. Um, I like to hug people and kiss them. And I'll give them a toy. Then I'll say, I'll be your best friend. So, come on. Um, since I can do it, then, I'll, then, then I will teach you how to do it. Why does God change us? Because he loves us. He loves us so much. He knows that we need to be changed sometimes. And he wants us to have a better life. He doesn't want us to be lost. He wants us to come home to him. How does God change us? Puts all the good things in our hearts. He changes us by giving us something to believe in. Why is it important to give someone a second chance? When you're giving someone a second chance, you're trusting them and believing in them. So that we're like not caught up on something that we've done and we can't really move on. To have a new beginning. What would you tell someone who didn't believe God could change them? That Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And he can change you because he's Jesus. Keep praying and he will change you. You will feel it. Because you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Happy New Year! Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Hello and good morning, everyone, to this first Sunday of the new year. Um, I'd just like to lead everyone in prayer this morning. Um, again, it's a, it's, a, it's a great new year and we're, we're, we're pleased to be in it. And I think um, we've got things to, to thank God for and we've got things to look forward to. Um, so let's begin. Uh, Heavenly Father, we, we thank you, first of all, for all that we have and we thank you for this new year. Lord, we know it's been an incredibly difficult year in the last year. We have no idea what your your roles for us in that are or why that happened or all these reasons lord but we know that things are getting better lord we know um that in your grace you provide us with with um, with with ways out of things lord the bible says that you'll only um give us give us some um, tasks lord that only we can cope with that you'll never give us more than we can cope with and so lord as we enter 2021 lord that we can see a vaccine we can see things on the horizon lord and we can see hope Equally, Lord, I think you're, you have some expectations of us. And so, Lord, it's interesting that some of the changes that we're beginning to see, and Lord, we also ask a blessing on this country as we enter a new environment, as we, as we now become a sovereign nation for the first time since 1973, Lord. And it's, Lord, we thank you for the leadership, not only of, our, of that country, Lord, and, and we just thank you so much for our Queen and, and the way she spoke out for you on Christmas Day, Lord. And that is the kind of leader that we need to lead this country. Equally, Lord, we ask a blessing on the authority of this church, Lord, 
and the authority of churches and people who um, <clears throat> who lead Christian lives throughout the land because we have some difficult times ahead. And although there is that hope on the rise, Lord, we ask that you fill our hearts with strength and with courage and that we can move forward in your name and in your name only. On this day, it's interesting that this morning when I looked at the news that one of the headlines, Lord, was of a fashion house in Paris that had its first catwalk. And the headline was that the clothes that were being, were being exhibited were meant to actually be worn. And it's the first time really in a long time that they've actually produced clothes that are meaningful. Clothes to actually be worn. Lord, we just ask for meaningfulness in our lives. Lord, we ask for a change in the relationship that we have with you. Lord, we ask, for some, we ask that we stray away from coming to church for our own ends or coming to you for our own ends, Lord, that we come for your requirements, not for ours. Lord, we get it's a two-way street. We understand that we get something out of our relationship with you. But Lord, let the focus be the relationship with you. Lord, in 2021, Lord, I just ask for a blessing on this church, Lord, this King's Church in Mould. We've, we've seen some great changes in, in the way that we've, we, we've put things on the internet and had broadcasts, and, and we've seen great numbers of people watching those, Lord. We know that people are listening. Lord, we just pray that sometime this year we can begin to come together again. Lord, we thank you. We ask for a blessing on, on all our lives, Lord, and we just, we, just, we just ask for your grace and your favour. And Lord, we, do, we, we have... There's not much more to say, Lord, really, apart from we just, aren't, we just thank you for all that we have in this new year. In Jesus' name, amen. As always, when we come to a new year, it's time to look back over the old year and see what was good, see what wasn't quite so good, and look to the future, isn't it? Look to the new year and think what we're actually hoping for and what we're praying for in the new year. And Andy sent out an email uh, earlier this week to a few people asking them if they would put down um, their memorable moment from last year and their hopes and their prayers for this year coming. And a number of people have done that. And then Andy said, well, I think you should do it as well. So to kick us off, before Nev and Emily and Pete and Jean and John come and share with us, I'm just going to share with you one of my memorable moments from 2020. And it's actually something that I've shared before. Um, we didn't have a brilliant 2020 seeing our family, like lots of people, and it was just nice to be in the garden. We spent a lot of time in our garden, and for the last 12 years since we've lived in that house, we've had the most ugly garden shed you can imagine, sitting in the best spot in the garden to get the sunshine. And that was my most memorable moment, was Sophie and Brent and Andy and I taking down that monstrosity and creating something beautiful in its place. It was a transformation. It was a garden makeover. It was transformational for our garden. So now when I look out of our kitchen windows, I just see a nice sunny spot not something ugly. And I've been pondering about that this week. Did you get the link to last week, pondering? I've been pondering on transforming something, something being transformational. And that took me to the verses in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, which say, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. True and proper worship. That's something Andy spoke about last week, wasn't it? And I've come to the conclusion that I would like a transformational makeover in this coming year. I need one. How am I going to be transformed? The Bible tells me, doesn't it? By not conforming to the world and allowing my mind to be renewed. So what am I holding out hope for in 2021? And how am I praying that it'll be different? I've got those two words in my mind, transformation and renewal. So I'm holding out hope for, firstly, transformation and renewal in me as I open myself to the Lord more and to his Holy Spirit working in me. I'm holding out hope for transformation and renewal in my family, especially for those that don't know Jesus and for those who aren't walking with him at the moment like they used to. 
And I'm holding out hope for transformation and renewal for us as a church family. Why do we need transformation? To become more like Jesus, of course. And renewal? Well, that's the work of the Holy Spirit in us. It started when we accepted Jesus as our saviour and it carries on in our lives if we allow him to empower us and work in us and work for him. That's my prayer for 2021, that we will all know transformation and renewal in the Holy Spirit that will make us more like Jesus and more able to serve him in the world. So that was me. And now we're going over to Nev and Emily and sitting on their couch and seeing what their hopes and prayers are for 2021. Hi everyone, I'm Nev Met. And I'm Emily. So, most memorable moment of the last 12 months. What are you going to go for? Um, I think time, really, because we're usually really busy with clubs, school, social activities and all that lot and then it was suddenly just stopped and taken away from us really so that was nice in one perspective. Yeah really. like everything all of a sudden our usual routines just came you know we were restricted straight away and yeah like you say all that just stopped instantly um, but we had so much time to then do the things like, we always put off going, oh, we'd like to do that, we'd like to do that, but we never have the time to do it. So, yeah, we actually, like, loads of walking, baking, puzzles. Um, so it was nice to have that family time together. Um, I think for me as well, being really busy with the children and, like Emily mentioned, school runs, um, I switched my moments. And what I mean by that, for example, a good example happened the other day. Um, I was dishing up a Boxing Day meal, big meal. Um, all the children were seated, they needed serving, this, that and the other. And I was in the middle of serving and then Teen turned to me, she was like, oh, mum, will you pull, pull my Christmas cracker? And I really could have done without it because as I said, I was trying to dish everybody up. But I switched my moments and I put down what I was carrying and I actually pulled a cracker with it. And I think I wouldn't have done that. I'd have kind of like just carried on going, oh yeah, in a minute. But I'd have missed that moment because Teen probably would have turned to somebody else and pulled the cracker with them instead so the whole um the story of Mary and Martha I think springs to my mind that I've just been shown actually what is important in the last 12 months and what can take a bye you know just to step back with other things um so coming up to this next year ahead what are you going to think for 2021 what are we hoping for um well <laughs> This year is a very, very important and like crucial year for me um, due to my GCSEs. However, the Welsh Government have cancelled them. So mm. I'm praying that the teachers will give a true reflection um, of my grades for me. Due, obviously, because I'm not going to get real sat exams with everybody else and a fair chance. Yeah, really? and so much riding on this year because mm -hmm. it is the rest of your life. Like, you're stepping zone to college, uni, everything's mapped out. So, yeah, a lot, a lot of prayer, I think, at the moment for, for teachers, for, and every, you know, anybody who works in a school environment to give them the, just to equip them with what they need to help, you know, this, this particularly Emily's year group at the moment being in her final year. Hello. Um, it's nice to be with you all this morning. Um, I'm Jean, this is Pete. We've been asked to share what our most memorable moment from 2020 was. And I'm delighted to be able to share that we became grandparents this year. Um, my daughter had uh, a little girl called Ella in March, right at the beginning of lockdown, which was difficult, um, but very joyful. And when we were finally able to meet up again, she is the most adorable, happy little, baby that you could imagine. So that has been our most memorable moment for this year. It's wonderful. Yes, and um, I'm thankful that actually more Bibles were sold this year than ever before, which is great news. And through all this pandemic, people started to turn to God, hopefully. And we still pray that, but it's been a record year for Bible sales. 
We've also been asked to think about what we'd like to pray for 2021. Um, and I would like to pray that the COVID vaccine would be rolled out quickly and that people would be able to have it quickly so that families can get back together again. Families have really struggled in not being able to see each other properly um, throughout the year and especially at Christmas. So my prayer is that once the vaccine's rolled out and readily available to everybody, that families would be reunited and back together again, including our church family. And I would like to prayers for 2021 and um, that the vision will evaporate from our society and uh, and find unity in Jesus Christ. Um, we've seen so much division through Brexit, the coronavirus, politics, all sorts of things that divide all our communities and the only way we can unify together is through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what I'd really want to pray for for 2021. My, um, my memorable moments for um, 2020 have been sitting here um, doing, the, um, doing the sound desk for, for all the services. It, it's been amazing to be a part of the team um, to bring a service um, for the congregation and for the kingdom every week um, and to be working with, um, with everyone else. Strangely, through lockdown, I've managed to make more friends within the um, church than I did when I was just turning up every week. So that, that's also been amazing. Um, and another great part was, was the, the time that we did meet, was sitting at the back here and, and turning the music up really loud. Um, going forward into 2021, I, I look forward and I pray for, um, um, for meeting again and um, being able to bring the entire church to the internet in some way. Uh, to bring a live service in, in some way, shape, or form, so that all of Flinch and, and the world can see, can see kings from the inside, um, and to bring kings to the world. We have a new year, of course. Um, we are going to be taking bread and wine together. So here's a, a just a heads up to say if you're going to join with us and take communion with us, which we'd love you to do, um, please get yourself ready, get some bread, get some juice, or even some proper wine, um, and. Uh, uh, share this with us, that would be great. I just want to lead us into this um, by thinking about what Sue spoke about and what the other folks have spoke, spoken about in their memorable moments, uh, about how God has kept us and how God has strengthened us and protected us and looked after us through 2020. And it's been amazing uh, how God has done that. And hopefully, as we enter into a new year, what this meal will mean to us as we take of the body of Christ and the blood of Christ what does that mean for you does it bring hope expectation anticipation God is doing something new now you might say well this is part of an old historical idea yes it is but it's also right now and it's going to we're going to carry on remembering Jesus uh, as we go through this year because it's all about him. And uh, he, we, we want to be led to that point where we understand what the cross really means. And so we're going to just share a song at this point while you maybe get some bread and wine together. Uh, lead me to the cross. And uh, that is my heart for this year, this 2021, that we would be led closer to the cross of Jesus. Savior, I come, quiet my soul, remember, redemption's hill, where your blood was spilled.
to share communion together, I'm just going to read the words from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognising the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on himself. Just going to take a few minutes for us to think about the cross, to think about why Jesus died, to recognize the fact that he died for me, he died for you, and examine ourselves before him. Let's give thanks for the bread. Lord Jesus, we are so grateful to you for what this bread actually represents. The fact that just last week we were thinking about you coming to earth as a baby and how amazing that was. And the fact that th less than, well, about 33 years later, you went to the cross because you love us. And on that cross, you defeated sin. You defeated the devil. And you won for us wholeness and healing. And you made a way for us to be right with your Father God. There was no other way. And Jesus, you did it for us. And all we can say is thank you. And live our lives in thankfulness for all that the cross means to us. And as we think of this new year, we do pray, as Andy said, that we will become closer to you. Lord, that that cross will mean more and more to us as we recognise afresh more and more just what you accomplished on the cross. Thank you, Jesus, for the love that took you to the cross, the love that held you on the cross, and the love that you still have for us today, which is just as amazing as it was then. We can never get to, the, to grips with what your 
sacrifice actually cost you and what it means to us. But from the bottom of our hearts, we say time and time again, thank you, Lord. Thank you for the cross where our salvation was won. Amen. The body of Christ broken for you. So having taken the bread, let's uh, give thanks for the cup together, shall we? Thank you, Lord, for uh, this cup which represents to us your blood shed. And as always, Lord, the Bible reminds us that without the shedding of blood, there can be no forgiveness of sins. And we know that you, your blood, which was poured out, has forgiven us our sins. We receive today, as we take this cup, your forgiveness Thank you for forgiving us. Thank you that your forgiveness is so vast that it covers all of our sins and all of the sins of anyone who comes to you and says how sorry they are for the sins that they've committed. We praise you today. We thank you that you went all the way to Calvary and let your blood be poured out so that we might be forgiven. Thank you, Lord. Amen. To the blood of Christ poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins.
well of love as my worship to you. In surrender, I must give my every part. Lord, receive the sacrifice of a broken heart. Jesus, what can I give? What can I bring to so faithful a friend, to so loving a King? Savior, what can be said, what can be sung as a praise of your name? What a great privilege on this first Sunday of a new year to come and share the Word of God. Thank you so much for uh, be allowing me to come and um, preach the Word of God today. Um, of course, uh, the first Sunday of a new year is always about I don't know, new year resolutions, new ways forward, all that kind of stuff. Um, I should be pointing you to these three statements here, knowing our God, sharing our lives, serving our will. They're the mission statement of our church. And um, our prayer is, of course, that we will know our God better, share our lives together, and serve our world effectively. But I want us to concentrate on something a little bit different today, if that's okay. Um, as you know, vision is a bit of a tricky subject right now, set against the kind of backdrop of this serious and life-changing pandemic. It's cost over 70,000 lives and numerous long-term illnesses. A Brexit deal that seems to have been a compromise too far and left the UK in a confused and muddled trading relationship with the EU and lots of other things that seem to be happening in our world. It's difficult to get your head round where we should be going. Life as we knew it and know it has changed forever and not necessarily for the best. From a societal perspective, many have lost livelihoods, homes, family members. Many are in uncertain times with the threat of unemployment and the stigma of failure knocking at their door. What about the church? Where are we helping, loving, supporting and influencing the discussion around these major shifts in our nation? Have we withdrawn into our safety net, closed in on ourselves and become even more introspective? Well, I just want to say that John's uh, time and sharing his moments uh, really encouraged me this morning. Um, he feels a part of a team. He feels as if he's made more friends. He feels as if he's part of something that is getting out there. And more and more, the church needs to get out there and do the things that it needs to do, and it does well. But I was just reminded of a verse in Matthew chapter 12 this week that I want to share with you and base around uh, what I want to say today. And it's chapter 12 and verse 29. Jesus says this, How can anyone enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions unless he first ties up the strong man? Then he can rob his house. Very short verse. What does it mean? Well, I just as an illustration, perhaps, I'd like to point you to Princess Diana. Princess who, you might say? Well, she was, a, she was at one point married to Prince Charles, the Prince of Wales, and I'm sure you do remember her. But one of the most controversial things she did during her life was in a trip to New York. She went to a hospital and she reached out and touched an AIDS sufferer. And at the time, it was thought that you could catch AIDS just by touching somebody who had the disease. Now, fortunately, that proved to be untrue, but the actions of one woman who was more concerned with the feelings of isolation that the AIDS sufferer was feeling than her own safety, is a salutary lesson to us all. Because she stepped out from behind her royal safety net and broke a curse. She entered the strong man's house and bound him. Because Jesus is quoting a general truism that was popular in his day, but was using the strong man saying, to refer to Satan. Satan is the strong man that has us bound by sin and death and Jesus has broken into his house 
and stolen us back because only he could bind the strong man. Maybe for some of us, you know, right now, it feels like we're bound up by Satan. He's attempted to disrupt and destroy the witness of the church. He has caused us to doubt and question the veracity of God. He has to become dispirited and disconnected to remind us that in his dominion, there is loneliness, isolation, and no one cares about you anyway. They're all lies that he loves to tell and he loves to whisper in your ear. Well, I'm not having that. 2021 will be a year where we enter the strong man's house and rob him of all the treasure that he has stored up. You know what his treasure is? It's you and me. That's what he thinks his treasure is. If he can keep us away from making the right relationship with God, if he can keep us away from hearing about Jesus, if he can keep us away from understanding the fullness and the power and the grace and the glory of the Holy Spirit in us, if he can do any of those things, he is winning. Well, I'm saying he's losing because we're going to enter into his house by the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit and we're going to rob him of his treasure, those souls who are lost. Those lost souls who have floundered along the way, the prodigals that have yet to realise that coming home is far better than living in a pigsty and those who are shackled and blinkered by unbelief. So today... We begin to speak liberation, freedom, and release for all those bound in the strong man's house, and the dawning of a new day that will again change the face of our nation for good and for God. The vision we're sharing today, then, is a redemptive vision. We're going to pursue a reclaim of the ground that has been lost and you know, you may have heard that before. Yeah, we're going to reclaim the ground that has been lost. But I just want to say I've got a bigger ambition and a greater vision than that to take new ground. To take ground that has never been claimed before. Ground where the strong man believed he was safe and secure. To ravage and to pillage his treasure chest and redeem the lost for the glory of Christ our Saviour. It's about time we really got stirred up about this that so many people are being lost. We are an intrinsic and important part of God's eternal plan. And he invites us to take our part in it, to take new ground, to take back the ground we've lost. Yes, we have lost quite a bit of ground. But you know, we can take that back, but we can also step even further. And I hope that you see the picture of how this unfolds. Now is the time to speak out about the love and the grace of the Saviour. Now is the time to share the righteous calling that God has placed on you and me. Now is the appointed time to tear down the barriers of deception and confusion and speak clearly, unashamedly and boldly about the incredible gift of salvation. Now is the time to open our mouths and speak and go on speaking. Paul says in Romans chapter 1, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. The gospel is all about Jesus, and he asks you and me to share in its telling. And the greatest gift that humanity has ever been offered is going to waste, because you and I maybe are too timid, shy, or embarrassed to speak out about it. Jesus broke into the strong man's house. Jesus overpowered him and bound him. Jesus took treasure from the strong man's house. And that treasure is us. God is a treasure seeker. Not in the piratical way that is so often portrayed in films and books, but as a compassionate and tender father that calls out his creation to come home. Let me ask you a question. Think about this on this first Sunday of a new year. Are you a seeker of salvation treasure? Is the quest for the, for the lost a part of your conscious spiritual journey? Do you think about those people who don't know Jesus yet? Breaking into the strong man's house requires courage, bravery and a squad of comrades. You know, it's not a single person's job. That's why we as a church need each other. 
not only for fellowship and a good chat, but to support and encourage one another, pray and be accountable to each other, to build up spiritual strength, faith and resilience with each other so that we may take the fight to the strong man. Yes, we are an army. What we need most of all is the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit, who is the officer in charge and will direct and lead our efforts. It's his desire to rescue and redeem, to save and to sanctify, to pardon and protect. This is our vision. This is our mission. This is our calling. Our prayer is that God, who is rich in mercy, will, along with his Son, our precious Lord Jesus, lead us into battle against the strong man. As Jesus has already won the victory and Satan is already defeated, we see the reality of that victory in the people saying yes to Jesus for a new life and an eternal future with God our Father. Are you able to join us in this calling, this mission, this vision? We need you and God wants you to be fully devoted to the vision before us. May the Lord richly bless you in this new year. Well, thanks again for being with us today. You've heard our hearts for uh, the new year, for 2021. And we pray that you will all know God's richest blessing in every way uh, during 2021. So it's a happy new year from us. If you want to find out any more about faith, obviously you know that our website is there. Please take a look. And if there's ever any way that we could help you with anything, practical or spiritual, then please get in touch because we would love to do that, to be whatever help we could be to you. So it's a happy new year from her and it's a happy new year from me too. And uh, I'd just like to say a, a blessing as we go. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my Savior on that cursed tree his body bound Drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed by heavy snow, Messiah still.